and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Grafted In. I am Bonnie with United in Yeshua here in Deloge, Missouri. I have with me Sharon Cluck with Mind of Messiah Ministries in Farmington, Missouri. And Jerry Coulter with Grace Family Outreach Church in Park Hills, Missouri. And welcome listeners and people watching on YouTube. Um, for those of you joining us for our first time, we are a weekly broadcast that is dedicated to discovering what we are actually grafted into as Christians, um, the roots of our faith. So I'm not going to go into a lot of that. If you'd like to uh, learn more about what we are, what we're going to talk about, you can find us on YouTube under Grafted In. It is a blue circle with the tree and roots on it that says Grafted In in the middle of it. All of our previous recordings are on there and you can catch up on everything. Um, we just completed a series on the feasts of the Lord, and before that we did words. Yes, before Hebrew that words. we did a series on ten Hebrew words that changed the way you read the Bible. And so now each week we're going to bring something new that's going to expose a little bit more of our roots to you. So with that said, let's dive right in to um, our scriptures today. Uh, we're going to be covering Matthew 22, 36 through 40. We're going to be talking about how that may be a little bit misinterpreted when we only read it in the English translation and how discovering it and the Hebrew translation and uncovering how the roots of our faith, how the people of that culture understood things um, actually brings so much more meaning to that scripture. You know, I'm actually excited about talking about this scripture, Jerry, because this is one of my, uh, I think it's a lot of Christians' favorite scriptures, because as Christians, we started out spending many, many years not knowing a whole lot about the uh, Old Testament. I know I was often told, well, Jesus did away with it, that stuff, you know, and he brought it down to just two laws, and if mm -hmm. you do that, you, you're doing good. And so, <laughs> which and is it's, true. It is true. It is that true. is true. That is true in its simplest form. That is very true. Um, but we're going to actually expound on how the Hebrew people in that day and what the situation was when that was when Jesus actually spoke those words. You, you know, I think, Vani, for all of us that went to school in America, we understood when we took a math class that we had, and we did fractions, we had to bring it down to a common denominator. Right. And so that's exactly what it is. When Jesus says to love God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself, he's brought it down to the common denominator. But it doesn't take away from the big picture that he started with. Right. So that's what we're looking at. Right. So we're going to start with Jerry. Jerry's okay. going to start and share some of uh, what we have uncovered here. So I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 22, verse 36 to 40. And... Uh, what happened here was one day Yeshua was approached by a crowd of people and one of them asked him, and this is what they said, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This is still red letters. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. So love your, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And on the surface, this commandment seems really simple. And, you know, this week on Facebook even, someone said, what are the two most important things in the Christian life? And almost everybody put love God, love people, and which is true. That is the truth. You know, Jerry, that wasn't um, a crazy question for them to ask because I think uh, when we're trying to figure our walk out with the Lord, if he was standing right here and he was, we only got to ask him one question, uh -huh. I think you would say, um, what do you want me to do, Lord? Exactly. What's the most important thing? I mean, if I can't yes. do everything, yes. what do I need to do? And that's basically what they were asking. That's what they were asking. So this um, commentary here says that on the surface... Yeshua's command seems simple. Love God, love others. That's all you need to do. But what if I told you that there's more going on here? What if I told you that there is a deeper meaning hidden within Yeshua's words here? Something that will forever change the way you see this most important command. So when he tells us 
which is the greatest of all the commandments. He's not doing so in the best of circumstances. He's surrounded by religious leaders. And remember, they were always trying to catch him. Yeah. The religious leaders were always asking him questions that they were hoping he would answer a certain way. But yeah. they're out to get him. It's not that they wanted to know this, really. Right. No, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's true. Because it's they already setup. knew that law. A setup. Absolutely. It was a setup. So he's surrounded by religious leaders out to get him. So... He's just fueled with a question from a group of leaders called the Sadducees. Which the Sadducees, for those that you don't know, were rabbis. They were teachers of the law. They were one sect. There was the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And they were both very highly educated teachers of the law that understood the law. And they were the very sad, you see. Yeah, I know. I was, <laughs> that's what they teach you in Sunday yes. school. The Sadducees were sad, you see. <laughs> because they didn't believe in the resurrection. resurrection. Right. They didn't believe in the resurrection. That's right. And so That would make me sad. Yeah. Very sad. So, <laughs> so the Sadducees were questioning him about marriage, <coughs> about the resurrection. And now Matthew tells us an expert in the law wants to pick out what is the most important of all 613 <laughs> 613 <laughs> commandments that were in the Jewish law yeah not just 10 commandments but 613 yeah they're asking Jesus out yeah. of all those 613 you tell me which one is the most important yes <laughs> <laughs> now the truth is this wasn't something that was entirely out of the ordinary for that time just as we do today, people of the Jewish faith at that time tried to distinguish between biblical commands that were more important and those that were less important. And they actually have terms for this, and it's called mitzvot kamurot. And I don't say that exactly right. Vani does. Kamurot. <laughs> kamurot. Yeah. Kamurot. So I don't speak Hebrew, so she's <laughs> got that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got and that guttural sign. These are, these are referred to as heavy commandments, heavy commandments. The word Hamirot means serious. It means serious. Of all the commands, these were considered to be the most serious and the most important. And we do do that. Of course we do. We do that now. We th we just, in our own minds, we think murdering is way worse than lying, you know? And, and yet, so they did the same thing, and yet in God's eyes, they're, it's sin is James sin. says it's all the same. It's all the same, and exactly. Je Jesus, didn't he say, if you... Think, if you hate someone, you've murdered them. You've murdered yeah. them. Exactly. The same so, spirit. But we still do the same thing that they were doing back then. You know, they, Thank God for Jesus and his death and, <laughs> and blood on the cross that cleansed us from all of that. Thank you, God. So this means, uh, this word means Amen. serious. So of all the commands, these were considered to be the most serious and the most important. On the other hand, the mitzvot kalot, yeah, mitzvot kalot. <laughs> referred to as the light commandment. So they had heavy duty commandments and they had light commandments. Kalot in Hebrew means lightweight. So these were less important commands, if you can imagine. And yet Jesus said that all of his ways, his burden is not heavy. His burden is light. So in Jesus' perspective, all of his commands are light. Yes. But we as people, wait them out, measure that's them right. out. And that's what they were doing here. Mm -hmm. We actually see Yeshua address this directly in the Sermon on the Mount when he said, Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven of heaven. That's Matthew 5, 19. So he's telling people not to ignore any of the commands, even those that people may tell them are less important. Ah, so you mean I am not supposed to lie. <laughs> even that little white lie I'm not supposed to do, right? People don't understand that <laughs> one's just as bad I know, as the other. but they are. So Sharon's going to continue with what our study So as on. Yeshua stands before these experts, or at least they think they're experts, in the law, in Matthew 22, he's addressing this same subject. The expert in the law is basically asking him to address this in the extreme. Like, don't just tell me what a mitzvah kamarot is. Don't just tell me what's more serious commandment. Tell me what's the most important of all of these commandments. That was the challenge that yeah, that's, I gave. Yeah. You know. And, and so what Yeshua is doing here is when you look at the Ten Commandments, the first four are about how we love God. 
And then the last six are about how we love mankind. And so he's breaking down the Ten Commandments into two sections. Not just the Ten, all 613. Yes, but what he's doing when he says that, because it's kind of like you have a, a, this is the title of something, this is the subtitle, and here's all the details. And so you have in the beginning, you have the what they're calling the law, and then they put the Ten Commandments under there as the main thing. And when you break down the Ten Commandments, they just tell you, well, if you brawl your neighbor's um, lawnmower and you break it, well, you're supposed to return it. You're supposed to return it's it fixed. fixed. Yeah. Fix it and return it. That's how those laws were broke down. So what Yeshua is saying is that if we take those Ten Commandments, you can take the first four and say those four are all about how we address God, how we love God. And those last six are all about how we love each other. We don't covet our neighbor's things. We don't steal from our neighbor. We don't have affairs with their partners. So all of those things are broken down. It's like yeah. subtitles. And so all of those 613 fit into those 10 and the 10 fit into the two so don't just tell me what's the most serious commandment tell me what is the most important of all the commandments and you can imagine a lot of what's writing on Yeshua's answer his whole credibility is at stake right here and when you realize how Yeshua responds you're going to realize how his answer is so rich and so perfect because when Yeshua responds that you should love the Lord with your heart, with your soul, and every bit of the strength that's in you, I wish that we all knew how to do that. And that you should love your neighbor as yourself. He isn't making it up himself. He's doing exactly what the experts in the law challenged him to do. He's listing actual commandments from the scriptures. And that's what a lot of Christians do don't realize. That's one of the things that a lot of Christians don't realize, that when Jesus said that, he wasn't giving us two new laws. I've heard many people say, well, Jesus gave us two new laws. All we're supposed to do is love God and love our neighbor. But he didn't give us two new laws. He was quoting the scriptures. Exactly. He he was doing exactly what they asked him to do. Which laws are most important? Right. So go on. So he was what? doing exactly what we said. You've got 613, and, he, right. and those two go into 10, and those two. So we're coming down to the common denominator. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So when Yeshua said to love the Lord with your heart, your soul, and your strength, he's reciting a passage that would have been recited twice a day, every day, by every Jewish person. It's a passage called the Shema. And it would have been one of the very first scriptures that he and every other Jewish person memorized as they grew up. And because it was fundamental to the relationship with God. So let me help see why in Deuteronomy, the Jewish people are about to cross over the promised land. This is actually in uh, the whole book of Deuteronomy is what we call the second law. And he's giving them that information before they cross over. But before they do, God will give them the law, the commandments that they are to live by that will identify them as God's people and sustain their relationship with the Lord. And at the very beginning, God says this. These are the, the commandments, decrees and laws that the Lord your God directed me to give to you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess so that you, your children, and their children after them that they may fear the Lord their God. As long as you live by keeping all of these decrees and these commandments that I give you so that you may enjoy long life. That's Deuteronomy 6, 1 so through why 2. why did God give us these commands? So we can live long in the land. And we can enjoy a long life. When I read that, I think it's more than just a long life. This, it's long life, eternal life. It is. It, long it is. life so and that we th can enjoy it. And they can stay there and he told them, if you turn your back on me, this land will spew you out. The, the Hebrew people were out of the land for many, many right. years mm -hmm. because the land literally spewed them out. And the same thing can happen to other nations. That's why we need to be cautious of keeping God's commandments. So Shema, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength, everything that's in you. So this is what that's you, Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. Yeah, Deuteronomy <laughs> 6, 4, and 5. So this is what Yeshua was quoting. He's quoting the Shema. And he knows that when he quotes it, that the people listening won't just remember this verse. This is an expert in the law. He is most, if not at all, of the Old Testament yeah. scriptures memorized. So he has the, 
these experts have these laws memorized, and probably most of all the Old Testament. So he doesn't just know the verse. He knows everything surrounding it. He knows what it means and what it implies, how important and how fundamental that it really is. But he also knows something that most of us don't know. And this is a point we're making today. He knows what each of these words really mean. He understands it in the Hebrew you see, each one of those words in this statement, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and with all of your strength, it means something different than what we think it does in our English language and in the culture that we walk in. Right. And that's what we've talked about so much on this broadcast is about how we miss so much being in America, being English speaking without knowing Hebrew, without understanding their culture. We filter everything that we read in the Word of God through our current culture, exactly through our current language. So when she was saying that the Sadducees, the ones that are so sad, <laughs> that they knew the scriptures, they did, they had them memorized and they knew them. And so they understood every single word. You know, Jesus said that all of the scriptures hang on these two commands. So they knew what every word meant. For example, the Hebrew, Hebrew word love, the Hebrew word for love in this passage is ahava. Now, the Hebrews have more than one word for love. Yes. But in this particular passage, it is ahava. Ah. And ahava isn't just a feeling. In English, um, that's what love is. We think that love is a feeling. It's something that we feel um, when we love our husbands and we love something. We think it's something we feel. But in we Hebrew... Love a hamburger or yes. a pizza. <laughs> Actually, the word love is very shallow in yes, English language. Yes, yes. Um, so, but in Hebrew, the word ahava always involves action. Love is something that you do. Yes. Ahava is not something that you feel, but it's something that you do. It's something yes. that you show, something that you act on. So how about the word for heart? For most of us, heart is the seat of our emotions. It's the place from which our feelings came or come. We feel love in our hearts. That's what we think when we say, oh, I love you with all my heart. We think we feel it deep down in our hearts. But the Hebrew word for heart is lavav. And it's not talking about a place where we store our emotions. It's actually talking about the center of our mind. It's where our thoughts come from. Hmm. That's what that word is. That's so interesting. I know when he says with all your heart, he's actually saying from the center of your mind, from the center of your thoughts. And, and what's well. really interesting about that, Bonnie, is that when he talks about, when we when Yeshua comes into our life, all of us understand, when we have a born-again experience, that he comes and he lives in our innermost being. But what does he tell us we have to renew? Our mind. Our, it's our, our mind. mind. Yeah, yeah. Our our minds. So it's, yeah. it's this heart so that needs renewed, that yes. needs to get in line with him. That's part of loving him, is renewing yes. that renewing to be in line with him. Right. Yeah. As I'm learning these Hebrew words, and I'm, I'm learning our transa translation, and I look them up in the Strong's, and I see all the different times that one word is translated into so many different words, I always wonder, why did they choose to translate it into that word? So that's why understanding these Hebrew words can bring so much more to what we're reading. So like that, when it says loving with all your heart, we would have thought it meant our inner being, uh -huh. but it actually means our mind, where our thoughts come from. So how about the word for soul? Because he says with all your soul, yeah. nefesh. In Hebrew, the soul isn't the spirit that lives, lives inside your physical body. But that's what we think when we say soul. We think it's the part of the man of us that Most lives inside of our physical body. But the Hebrew word nefesh describes your entire life, every part of your life, every part of who you are. It can include, that is, includes your mind, will, and emotions. It includes everything. When, when they use the word nefesh, it is everything about you. So that would be loving him with all of our strength. And well, that's the next word. Yeah. The word for strength is mayod. And this is kind of crazy, and I, I didn't know this, but the Hebrew word that Yeshua used in the scriptures was mayod. And mayod doesn't actually have an English equivalent word, which is probably why it was so difficult, and they just said strength. But it literally means, if we were to translate it literally, it means all of your very. Well, that makes no sense to us. So the best way to describe it would be to say something like all of your oomph. 
all of your every bit of energy that you have, yes. everything that's inside of you. You yeah. give it your being, all, yeah, yeah, your yeah, being, your whole, your whole everything. You know, everything. When you go yeah. after it with everything you've got. You yes. know, it's, it's the <laughs> essence of who you are. It's the yes. essence. Yes. You know, and it's, it's very being. And Paul yes. says, "Finish the race." You yeah, know, you man. give it all your oomph. Mm-hmm. You go. So you know that that really changes how we read that. When we said, when he just says, yeah. love the Lord with all your heart mm-hmm. and your soul and your strength, you know, it's like, that's so much more than just love God. Right. You know, that is so much more than how in our English we say just love God. Right. So when Yeshua tells us that we are to love God with our heart, soul, and strength, that this is the greatest commandment. He's not just saying we're supposed to feel a lot of love for God. He's saying our love is shown through our actions. That our minds, oh, every part of our lives, every ounce of our energy our purpose. has to be devoted to God. Exactly, our, our purpose. purpose. Everything should be devoted to God. Mm-hmm. Everything. You know, take brushing my teeth. <laughs> That's a minor <laughs> thing. But I should be taking care of my teeth because this body is a body of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. It should be done for God. I know that sounds crazy. We... We easily say, I know at work, when we're talking, you know, we say we don't work as to um, who we're working for. We work as if we're working unto the Lord. We do our job as if God is the one watching us. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that our boss is watching us. It's that God, the Father, is watching us. And when you work for people, if you you live for God, you work for people, the people you work for are blessed. Yes, because you're working as if you're working unto the Lord. That's what he's saying. Every ounce of our oomph, our energy. But then Yeshua does something, this is great. Yeshua does something really interesting. He adds to it. You know, he did that in the in the Sermon on the Mount. Exactly. You know, that is what I've always thought his purpose was, was that he came to explain the Torah yeah, to does, us, the law. Yeah. And he adds to it. He throws in another scripture. This time he quotes Leviticus 19.18. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. That was an actual mm-hmm. commandment, <clears throat> which must have caught the attention of the religious leaders. So it was a common practice among the Jewish teachers at that time to do something called a Gezera Shiva. And it basically means to compare two things that have an equal. Um, and this is where they would take two different scriptures and they would find the common denominator, exactly. like what you were talking about, mm-hmm. yeah. Sharon. Same word and, in, in, right, in different and, scriptures. Right. Yeah. And it would allow each verse to interpret the other. And so that's what Yeshua was doing here. The common word shared by both of those scriptures in Deuteronomy and Leviticus was the word ahava, love, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And what he's saying is that you can't truly love God with your lavav, nefesh, and meod, heart, your soul, and your strength, your thoughts, your entire life, and every ounce of your strength you've got, unless you also love your neighbor as yourself. And who is your neighbor? You know, that is so crazy because we we did a study on that. And you know what? I think we ought to do an actual, we ought to cover that. Who is your neighbor? Because the scriptures actually tell us who our neighbor is. And if that's another thing that is not who we think it is. Right. You know? Um, and that I, I don't really want to go into that because that's a whole teaching in itself, isn't it, Sherry? <laughs> so, but, so let's just stick right now with what we know as... As English speakers, so he says, love your neighbor as yourself. That phrase, as yourself, is the Hebrew word kamocha. Because we do love ourselves. We do. And it and he's Don't basically <laughs> saying, yeah, he's basically saying if we would see our neighbor as we see ourselves. When our neighbor needs something, if we needed something, we would do all that we could to make sure that we, we got it. If our neighbor, if we see our neighbor needs something, we should be trying to help them do all that we can do that they get it. Yes. You know, if they're hurting, we want someone to comfort us. If we see they're hurting, we should be doing all we can to help comfort them. That's right. And we shouldn't be. Um, judging them because they're different. That's what's great about our little trio. We talk all the time. We are on, in in some cases, very different doctrinal uh, beliefs and understandings. But we all have the love of the Lord. And we and respect we see, one another. We do. Yeah. I we mean, I, I love these girls. <laughs> <laughs> they're my buds. <laughs> and we're friends. And, and we love each other. I, I mean, yes. we do. So anyway, um, here's what makes it even more beautiful is that we got to not forget who Jesus was talking to when he said this. He was talking to his enemies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. He was yeah. talking to his enemies. People who actually wanted to kill him. Yes. Yes. And, you know, he lived the example and what it makes it even more beautiful is that he shows us this when he goes to the cross. 
Yeah, amen. In the end, he isn't just speaking them, he's embodying what he taught. He was. He's living he it out. He showed us what the love of God was, what Lavab Nefesh and Naod was. Yes. And we, he literally, he didn't want to. He said, Lord, if there's any other way, yes. take this cup from me. Yes, but he instead, did. he surrendered his life, every last ounce of his strength, in obedience to what the Father wanted out of Yeshua's love Amen. for his neighbor. Amen. So For you and I. Yes. For everybody that's listening. We can't listening. miss it. We can't miss it. And, he, and we have to remember that for everyone that's listening, if Yeshua had to die for just one person, he would have died would for have died. you. Just you. Yes. He didn't just go to the cross because of all of the crowd that was there that loved him, that was heartbroken because of the way they treated him. And he didn't do it just for his friends. He went to the cross for the Sadducees. He for went to people the cross that hated for them. Him. Yes. Yeah. yes. The, he went to the cross for that for that Sadducee rabbi that was trying to trap exactly. him. Exactly. He went to the cross for the experts in the law. He went to the cross for the the broken Samaritan. He went to the cross for the Gentiles who didn't even know him at the time. He went to the cross for everyone who even put him on that cross that was yelling, "Crucify him! Crucify him!" That just, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. He knew. He knew they didn't know what they were doing. And he loved them despite And he prayed for them weakness. to be forgiven because they didn't That's, know what they I were know. doing. I know because he loved them as he loved himself. He loved them. And he goes, like Sharon said, he went to that cross for me and you. Yes, he did. He went to that cross for me and you. And so when we see, when he says that greatest commandment, I know Jerry is. The oh, I know. I love it. I, know. I love it. Jerry gets she, so emotional. I love is. it. When we see. She loves that, Jesus. Uh, it's obvious. We, <laughs> I know. Who's like our God? Yeah, amen. Exactly. Who is? I don't know that we're capable of ever. Understanding. Ever really fully understanding, but we can run the race and aim for the goal. And, and aim for the pride and, and receive, receive what, he's done, for us, what yeah. he's done for us. Exactly. So Praise God. <laughs> when we, it makes it more powerful when we understand it fully. I, I really think that it does. It's it's like it's it's to see what truly looks like, what love truly looks like through Yeshua, what what he really did to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. To really look at the cross, yes, and see what. And that's what, what this did. is all about that we just read. Right. That's why he tells us to pick up our cross daily. And to follow him. You know, follow that brings him. a whole new meaning to that statement, too, yeah. when we think about it. So that's the end of our uh, our um, program for today. If there's anyone out there that would uh, that doesn't know the Lord or doesn't understand why Jerry's in tears right <laughs> now, you know, know that Yeshua loves you. Jesus loves you. He loves you in a way that love is not even explainable in the English language. And that there's nothing, nothing that can stand between him and you. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, he is the father waiting for the prodigal, for the one that's left who would turn his back on him. He's waiting for you to return. And he proved it when he went on the cross. Absolutely. Yes. And the cross is for you. The blood that he shed was for you. So, ladies, before we close, let's just do a quick prayer. If there's anybody out there that doesn't know this Yeshua, this Jesus, that he loves them so much, let's just uh, let's just rededicate right now. And if you're listening and you'd like to say that prayer with us, say that prayer with us. Lord, Yeshua, Father God, come before you right now. And I know I haven't and I don't live a perfect life, but I thank you, Yeshua, that you love me, that you chose to die on the cross for me. Amen. And that your blood covers my weaknesses and my sins and, and all my shortcomings. I ask you right now to fill my heart, to make me whole, to make the love, your love be the love that's inside of me. Come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I surrender. I surrender as you surrendered in the Garden of the Gethsemane. Not my will, but your will. Amen. I give my life to you, and I accept your love for me. Thank you, Father, that you sent Yeshua to die for me. In Yeshua's holy, holy name, I acknowledge that I am a new creation 
because he is now the Lord of my life and will forever be. Amen. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer with Bonnie today, please just contact us. Send us an email. What's the email address, Bonnie? Grafted in at myyahoo.com. We would love to pray with you further. We'd like to encourage you. we just like to help you along your way. We're not asking you to do anything for us or with us. We're just saying we're available and we're here if you need to be encouraged or helped to find a, a, a place to fellowship or, or just to have someone to pray with you. To have someone pray or even get connected with some um, literature and stuff that may exactly. help you uh, help you grow in your walk. So until next week, we wish you all God's perfect peace and joy and everything. And love, Shema. And love, Shema. Shema. By saying, Shalom. Shalom.